point in the countdown, as we mentioned on Monday, that 40, T minus 40 second point is when we can pause to hold for final checkouts or pressurizations if necessary. But once we pass that T minus 40 second mark, a number of things are going to occur in rapid succession. The ground spin and ignition systems will come up to flight pressure. The ship goes to internal power. And after that, the quick disconnect or QD arm lockout that's removed in preparation for retraction shortly after T0. Once we pass T minus 40 seconds, as we saw on Monday, we had the ability to recycle the count under certain conditions back to that T minus 40 uh, second mark and hold there to assess what happened and if we're able to proceed to T0. And like we said, there, we can hang out at T minus 40 for several minutes uh, before we start running to do some just some limits essentially uh, on our on our propellant on board. There are a couple of other things like if we pass the T minus 10 second point um, and the water starts to flow in that flame deflector and we scrub, that's automatic scrub for the day. Oh, there's our TVC, our thrust vector control checkout. It's got a little bit of a wiggle there uh, on those inner Raptor engines, those 13 inner ones, which are going to be used for that boost back burn uh, and the landing burn. So cool to see those. Yeah. I love that shot. We don't have that on Falcon. It's just so cool to see really the business end of the super heavy booster. <laughs> Ten seconds away from that T minus 40 hold. We'll see. All right, we are going to hold at T minus 40. We're watching the temperatures on the ship right now for the ship fuel. Sounds like they're working through that. We might be able to release that hold shortly. All right, sounds like we're going to be able to reset those holds, not tracking any other holds. And clock is rolling. And the clock is rolling once again. And now T minus 30 seconds till the liftoff of I'm the eighth one, flight of Starship. One. Our flight director, Joe Schleicher, today is go for launch. Let's listen in as he take us, takes us through the final seconds of the count. Minus eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. We got the phone. seconds, a little over 40 seconds into the flight. We are seeing 33 out of 33 Raptor engines ignited. Boosters pushing us downrange over the Gulf. Next milestone coming up in just under 10 seconds is going to be max Q, that max aerodynamic pressure. Max Q. All right, so we're through max Q. That's the, the heaviest stresses it's kind of seeing on the way up. Wow, that was pretty incredible. <laughs> I'm still recovering. <laughs> that was amazing. Beautiful views of the vehicle on ascent, pitching downrange away from the launch tower. Next thing coming up is hot staging. So we're going to look for six engines to ignite on ship while we're still attached to the top of the booster. We'll see all but those three center engines shut down on booster.
We're hearing the initial call that we are go for booster catch back here at the launch tower. Coming up now on hot staging, the ship's engines will ignite while still attached to the Super Heavy booster, and also while Super Heavy booster will still be under power itself. The clamps holding the two stages together are going to release, and Starship second stage engines will be engine cut off. Ship engine start up. Stage separation. Boost back burn start up. There we go. Ship engines, all six Raptors ignited. We're doing that boost back burn. Looks like we got 11 of the 13 that we command for Cold that. So return. that's going to start sending. The booster back, we are still go for booster return, even with two Raptors out during that boost back, we can do a full duration one. Looks little. like we got a ship, six engines heading into space, and then we got a booster hopefully on our way back to Starbase. How's everything going in Hawthorne, Chris? Everything is looking good. The crowd eagerly followed that ascent and now watching the booster coming back. So as you can see on the left-hand side of your screen here, that is ship continuing. And that's a great view of ship continuing on its way to space. They're looking, that's inside the camera, inside the aft skirt, looking at the Raptor vacuum and the sea level engines, the sea level ones there in the center of your screen under our T plus clock. You can see our boost back burn. We're down to three engines on the boost back burn. Uh, and you can see ship on the right-hand side of that telemetry with six engines lit, continuing its ascent to orbit already over 100 kilometers in altitude. The booster 87 kilometers in altitude and continuing its trek right now back to the landing site and catch site. There's a shutdown. And we just heard a good call out for boost back shutdown. The next thing we should see on our screen is the separation of the hot stage from the super heavy booster. We jettison that because we do not need it for the landing, uh, but on future iterations of the Super Heavy, that uh, hot stage ring will be incorporated into the booster and we will get it back. But for today, you can see it on the right-hand side of your screen there, just separating off of from the right-hand side of the booster. You can also see the booster doing its liquid oxygen dump there, which is exactly what we would expect for it to do as the booster gets itself configured for the landing here. Now, meanwhile, Starship will continue to coast after it reaches orbit for about 40 minutes or so up to an altitude of 240 kilometers, but it's still got a ways to go there, currently accelerating past 7,500 kilometers per, per hour there in velocity. And just look at those great views of the booster coming back. The, the, the Gulf coastline there just looks absolutely gorgeous. And there we hear nominal trajectories all around. And uh, Dan and Kate, we're at five minutes, uh, 15 seconds here uh, into the flight. Everything looking good for the Super Heavy and for Starship today. Uh, what's it like there at Starbase as we get ready to catch? The Go. It was incredible, Chris, yeah. to be able to see the mock diamonds with my own eyes. That was amazing. Uh, we are standing by for return of booster back to the launch tower. We have heard that we are go for the, uh, the catch of the booster. Yeah, this coming from one of our long range tracking cameras, we're able to see the hot stage separate and fly away. So coming up in just about 30 seconds, we're gonna look for the landing burn. We're gonna command those 13 inner and middle ring engines to turn on. 13 initially, they bleed off all of that velocity as we're slowing down from supersonic speeds, eventually moting down to only three engines for that precision flight into the tower. Right now, Booster using its four hypersonic grid fins to help guide itself through this atmospheric entry back for its precision, precision landing at the launch site. Once again, we're gonna ignite first the center 13 engines. We should see that coming up here momentarily. Engines and startup. This is going to come down to three engines as the booster slows down for its landing. And we just heard the sonic boom. What an incredible. 
incredible sight to see the super heavy booster gliding down booster into the chopstick down. arms once again. Stuck the landing. Wow. <laughs> that will never get old. All right. We saw 12 out of 13 light for that landing burn. Booster still able to make its way with that final precision burn on the three engines in for the tower catch. So Booster caught. Meanwhile, keeping an eye on ship. We still got six Raptors burning. Those are going to continue for about another minute um, until we'll get to uh, the Starship engine cutoff. Really cool view. Uh, again, a million shout outs to all of our avionics team who make these cameras possible for us. That's looking uh, right down inside, essentially the skirt area of ship where you can see a pretty good view of all six Raptors, especially those three inner ones, one of which we're gonna hopefully relight a little bit later. And we just saw some engines go out. It looks like we are losing attitude control of the ship. Ship FTS is saved. And so we're still getting video down from the ship. You can see we've lost several engines and we've lost attitude control of the vehicle. So we'll continue to stick with it. For those of you that have, for those of you that just uh, recently joined us, we had uh, a successful liftoff of the eighth test flight of Starship, followed by a successful a successful stage separation. We saw the booster actually, you can see it just behind us here. Uh, the booster had a successful catch back at the tower. Um, unfortunately, it seems as though we lost the uh, uh, the attitude control of the ship. We are standing by as we listen in with the teams on the nets to understand. Uh, what information we're able to provide you. We will provide that as soon as we are able, um, but it's pretty incredible to take a moment and see <laughs> the booster just behind us. Certainly yeah. a different view than last time. And at this point, we've essentially lost contact with the ship. We're no longer receiving telemetry at this moment. So we were only about 20 seconds away or so from the end of that ship ascent burn, we saw several of the engines start to cut out. Uh, once you lose enough of those center engines, you're gonna lose attitude control. And so we did see the ship start to go into a spin. And at this point we have lost contact with the ship. So uh, we're gonna listen in for a little bit. Just, I think it's pretty obvious we're not gonna continue the rest of the mission today, but uh, just give us a couple more minutes. We'll bring you more information as it comes in. All right, as you see there, we were watching here as the SpaceX crew, they did say they had a successful launch of the rocket booster and that you saw it as it landed back here on the on Earth as well. So certain things went successful with this launch, but want to put this up on your screen that you see it there. It caught the super heavy booster. But as you heard, as we've been listening into the broadcast, they have now officially lost contact, though, with the Starship rocket. So when they continue to give us an update and let us learn a little bit more about what's happening. We'll bring that to you here on Live Now from Fox, but some pretty incredible moments that we've been able to bring you as it pertains to this eighth launch 
of the SpaceX test flight. So what's important about this one, though, this Starship is supposed to be a completely reusable spacecraft. This is unlike SpaceX's Falcon 9, which is only partly reusable. So the plans that SpaceX does have eventually for the Starship is for those long-term missions to the moon and Mars. It's going to eventually, they say, be able to carry up to 100 astronauts. So this is not not unusual for the company. They've seen other incidents before. In fact, in January, during the Starship's seventh test launch, Mission Control announced that they had lost all communication with the spacecraft. Does appear to be the same thing that's happening right now. But again, we'll continue to update you as we learn more information. We're going to step away for a two-minute break. Stay right here with us.